This is the Dr. Duke Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dr. Duke Show. I am Dr. Duke, and I am joined today by Dr. Jake Jacobs. Jake, good to be with you. It's great to be with you, Dr. Duke. So I got. Let's, we're going to wade into some politics here, and uh, tr- trigger warning: we're going to suggest that maybe there are flaws in the Trump campaign that we we really ought to start taking seriously as conservatives, uh, and so. We start with Ron DeSantis, and uh, I get it. The guy is not perfect. I get it. He is, um, um, for whatever reason, being – well, we know why he's being targeted, Jake, because he's probably the most effective governor we have in the country for conservatives. What's really troubling me, I expected Trump to go after him, but, man, the dishonesty of of Trump's attack is troublesome to me, number one. And number two, you got the – rhino half of the Republican Party who are just like surrounding Caesar with knives, plunging them. Uh, it, it, it's just unseemly. It's, it, when you think about what he's done in Florida, what is it exactly that Republicans apparently are unable to get behind? Well, well l- l- uh, sadly, unfortunately, a lot of Look, at, I voted for Donald Trump. I was not a Trumpster at first. I'm normally a governor guy. I was Governor Walker. He fizzled. I was Governor Jindal. He fizzled. And I saw that Donald Trump was willing to take on the deep state, the Hillary machine, the Republican rhino machine. So I was for him. But right now we're in the midst of something where Donald Trump is not being wise when it comes to his decisions. He's going after everybody and anyone who dares to even challenge any of the things that he's trying to attempt to do in his campaign for president. So why they're going after Donald Trump or not supporting, excuse me, uh, Ron DeSantis right now, uh, I'm befuddled by it. Well, it seems to me, and we'll get to the story real quick, but Donald Trump is not going to get one more vote than he already has. Is that fair to say? I mean, do do, do we really believe that people who voted for Biden— are going to vote for Trump now? Well, there's no way in God's and, and And we know he's not going to get as many Republicans. He's just not. So wh- what's the end game here? I, I don't understand it. I don't know if, if it's his ego, uh, his advisors giving him bad advice. He should be finding a very wise way of actually reinforcing many of the things that Don, uh, Ronald DeSantis accomplished as the governor of Florida. And maybe he can say, hey, I live in Florida. And if you want what he has done, vote for me and I'll, I'll do it at the federal level. Why, If you're Trump, why wouldn't you reach out to the front runner that's not him, the, peop- the person who has the most apparently clout, although that's slipping, and just right away offer him the vice presidency. I guess maybe it's too early to do that. But Ronald but Reagan did that. He, exactly. he did that with George uh, H.W. Bush. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it, 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 and let's not forget that Trump is almost as old as Biden, right? And so this, is, this whole thing is puzzling to me. And now they're attacking DeSantis uh, because of his comments about the deep state, uh, his choice of language. Take a look at the latest con- uh, comments from Ron DeSantis. And then on bureaucracy, um, you know, we're going to have uh, all these deep state people, you know, we're going to start slitting throats on day one um, and be ready to go. You're going to see a huge, huge uh, um, uh, outcry because Washington wants to protect its own. But at the end of the day, this is a, a city that's failed this country. So Trump has already admitted that the one, in his mind, the one mistake he made was not getting rid of bureaucrats, right? That he, when he promised to drain the swamp, he took, took presidency, and then the same swamp creatures surrounded him and run the, ran the government, right? I mean, it, he got rid of really nobody. Uh, and so he says his one mistake was that. Here you got Ron DeSantis, DeSantis saying, hey, this is what we must do. And Trump is just all angry with him. And then, of course, the progressive left is using their losing their mind because of the slit throats argument. Right. You know, OK, you know, the, there was one thing about the rhetoric, but I I think we all love the fact that this great governor of the state of Florida, for the most part, as far as I'm concerned, he is willing to say we have to go after the deep state, the deep swamp. Now, the history of this whole admit, administrative bureaucratic state when you stop and think, if you go back to Woodrow Wilson, the progressive Woodrow Wilson, it was Alexander Tolkien, not Tolkien, excuse me, uh, de Tocqueville, 
who, you know, he came to America, he wrote the book Democracy in America, he went from New York to Green Bay to New Orleans, and he saw the greatness of this country, and he said two things. One is that America is founded upon Judeo-Christian values, that's, that's one of the keys, and the other is it's a federal system where most of the power lies at the local sovereign level. And the, 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 the clip that we just had here, the book here, that we could go back to that, says de Tocqueville's Nightmare, the administrative state emerges in America, 1900 to 1940. So Woodrow Wilson and people like FDR and LBJ, they believe in essence that the federal constitutional government, it's uh, slow and laborious to accomplish legislation. The progressive wanted things done yesterday. And since we've had this explosion of the federal bureaucratic state we have literally millions and millions and millions of federal employees their lifers who have exploded expanded to federal state with rules and regulations galore president trump candidate trump and president trump promised he would take them on and he did a little bit over here and a little bit over there but for the most part but here's the key to remember this that deep state they hate Trump because he did express that right. rhetoric. And they've been wanting to destroy him. The Swampocrats have been wanting to destroy him from day one. Yeah, I just, you know, again, I, I voted for Donald Trump. I, I, I would vote for him again if he is the candidate. I mean, um, I have nothing against him running. It's just the it's me or nobody attitude, right? This idea that, I mean, so let's say he does win. Let's say he was to win. Who hasn't he alienated? I mean, who does he work with? I mean, is he good? does he think he's going to, because he couldn't do it the first time, does he think he's going to just be able to boss people around and change the minds of people? Uh, how are you going to get things done? Uh, the whole thing is bizarre to me, and uh, I get it. I understand he, the, the way he was badly treated, the lies, the investigations. Uh, you could just compare his treatment with Hunter Biden, and my God, okay. it's stunning. I get it. Duke, Duke I, uh, but look. I get with you, and I hear this, and I, I'm, I'm, I am agreeing with you. I, it hurts me to hear it. When I'm sitting with my friends, and we're outside on our patio, and we're enjoying a beautiful night in Wisconsin sky, under the Wisconsin sky, they're all saying the same thing you're saying. And then I get real defensive because I'm sitting here going, but what the heck? Stop and think of it. This guy who was the darling of the Democrats, hanging out with Oprah and, and you know all the Democrats, and he was the great Democratic star, rock star, then he runs for president, and from day one, the Swampocrats, the deep state fanatics, the administrative bureaucratic state, they were hell-bent on destroying him. From day one, Washington Post declared, it's time to impeach Trump. There were riots in the streets of Washington, D.C., and the media downplays it. All we hear about is this so-called January 6th insurrection, etc. But here's my whole point. They went after him over and over again, the Russia hoax, the Ukraine hoax, all the impeachment stuff, and I'm pissed right now because here it is, and this guy, they're trying to run, they're trying to put him in prison. And, and it, what frustrates me is if he was, if he could play this game right, he could win. But what you're saying, I, I got, these are my wife's girlfriends, and they're saying, I'm not going to vote for him. These are conservative pro-lifers, and they're going, we're not going to vote for this, him. I go, what, what's the alternative? Th this is not about him or his personality. This is about reality, right? I mean, uh, would, I, would, would it be a great revenge story, right? The return of Trump, would it be a great big middle finger to all these bureaucrats? Yeah, absolutely. But what is the thought process here that makes us think that he's going to win this? And, and bef we got, we're going to have to take a break. But before we go to break, let's show you one of these swamp creatures, uh, oh, yes. Joe Scarborough. Yes. And after the break, we'll come back and talk about it. So not only is, uh, is a significant part of the right written him off and really don't want to work with him. And he's attacked those people. I mean, it, if Ron DeSantis is your one of your biggest em enemies and you're Donald Trump, you got bigger problems. Dude, take a look. Take a look. Real, oh, good. Go just, just real quick. I want you to remember, and I've been on a record a long, long time ago on my show and other shows. I've been saying they're going to go after Ronald Dion DeSantis like Donald Trump. Of course. Because that's the nature they, of the, the woke left crats. wants Trump to run. They yes. do, and the more baggage they can saddle with him, with the 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 better. But they recognize the guy that's the closest is DeSantis. So rather than Republicans seeing that, right, we side with Trump and 
the, the DeSantis keeps falling in the polls. Take a look at Scarborough here. Again, I was saying before, I don't, I don't understand what's worth uh, um, um, trashing the rule of law, what's worth trashing American democracy. I, I just, I've got to say, I don't, I can't even imagine how our party got to a point where a front runner, guy in second place, would say, I'm going after the deep state and I'm going to start it's slitting Smith throats Thrones. on my first day in office. This is fascism, is it not? Oh, God. Fascism. Now, if you were to listen to the rest of that tape, it would have blown you away. Oh, yeah, Literally, it's unbelievable. Were, he, Ron DeSantis is doing the Zeke Heils. It was it's horrible. So the deep state now is protected, according to Scarborough, right? Right. So so these career bureaucrats who've driven us into debt, who have started crazy foreign wars, who have opened the border over and I think we can go on a, an hour talking about what the deep state has done. They're a protected class. And any president who's, who says we're going to try to fix this is now a Nazi. Right. Yeah. Take, let's take a break. We'll come back and talk more about this. Back again with Jake Jacobs, and we're talking about trying to work ourselves through what we would love to see, what our sense of vengeance and justice would like to see, versus really what is doable, right? I mean, and so, uh, yes, vol uh, J uh, Joe Biden is vulnerable, absolutely, and, and he's going to lose some Democrat votes. But how many Democrats are going to vote for Donald Trump if he's the candidate? It ain't happening. I, I don't see it. You mentioned it to my w white women in particular are going to have a real conservatives are going to have a real hard time vote for but Donald But wouldn't Trump. you say right now that Don, that Ron DeSantis by saying slit throats that's not a smart move is it? I I mean I wouldn't have used that language but a a visceral definitive comp uh, statement that we are going to do something about the deep state that would but be he, useful. But he just like the tweets of Donald Trump if he and I like Ronald Ron DeSantis I really do but he's got to be careful. You can talk tough. I mean he graduated from Yale and Harvard. He was a trainer of Navy SEALs, Naval Academy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He's a brilliant guy. But you know, don't feed the deep state uh, monster. Well, you got a double standard too. If if uh, some young Repu Democrat had made a statement like that, we're going to slit the throats of these fascist Republicans. Uh, they wouldn't even have to Dr. apologize. Dr. Duke, it's right? not relevant. What's relevant is that if he continues to make these faux pas, it's going to add up and hurt him. Well, I mean, the, my concern is that talking tough is now a faux pas. I, I wouldn't have used oh. that term. But look at everything else he said that he, didn't, he wasn't so graphic. They still came after him. Don't they say the same thing about Donald That's Trump? That's exactly right. But there's a difference. Uh, you don't get the creepy tweets. You don't get the, uh, the, the seemingly hair trigger defensiveness. Uh, and the other thing I would say about DeSantis, that's, he, he seems like what Trump would have been 25 years ago with a little, uh, a little boundaries, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and look, and, and let's, not, let's face it, too. There's no, they're coming after him for his speech because there are no skeletons in his closet. Yep. Donald's. Donald Trump's cl closet, and right now his front living room is full of skeletons, right? So there's that, too, to have to deal They're with. They're going to Alinsky DeSantis, and the Alinsky rule is look for dirt, and if you can't find it, make it up. Right. So I concur with you on this. Uh, and, and granted, look, I can live with this slitting throat stuff. We can live with that because we know what he's talking about metaphorically. He wants to go into Washington, D.C., get rid of that deep state, by the way, which exploded during COVID to the tunes of billions millions of dollars and millions more employees and millions more or thousands more rules and regulations. 80,000 new IRS agents. Yeah, well, it's unbelievable. Yes. Yeah, so I, we all applaud him for that. But he's got to be as he's got to if we're saying Donald Trump needs to wise up, well, he needs to be careful. Find the rhetoric that is going to speak the truth uh, to Washington, D.C. And, and get him elected president. It, it, I guess my takeaway from all of this uh, hen clucking that we're engaging in <laughs> i guess my takeaway is is that if i were donald trump i would be reaching out to desantis i would try to make an ally of him i would have to make i would try to make him my mini me so to speak i would be considering him for a if not the vice presidency a significant place in my cabinet i mean how many republicans could be brought together if you were to do that well it would be brilliant i mean kennedy did it with lbj right. uh, reagan did it with you know george hw bush Right. And, and keep in mind, 
the only reason Do- uh, DeSantis is even saying anything negative about Trump is because Trump's attacking him. Yeah. I mean, he, 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 I think Trump, uh, DeSantis' plan was to ignore it. Uh, this is me. This is who I am. This is what I've done in Florida. But Trump will not allow it. This is Trump's ego. Exactly. This is Trump's insecurity in his exactly. ego. Exactly. Yeah. And again, whatever happens November of next year, who, uh, who the candidates actually are standing, uh, this is a big problem for the Republicans because, you know, he's going to get his 35%. Duke, is he gonna get if any more? we lose the right. next presidency of the United States, we are Phoenix. So let me ask you, we because are Phoenix. I'm going to put you on the, on the spot right here. What do you think the odds are of a Trump Republican Party nominee against either Biden or any other Democrat? What do you think the odds of, of Donald Trump being the guy who can carry this country? Okay, when I'm around people who love this country, and that's why they love Donald Trump, with foibles and all, I believe we could have a repeat of 2016. But then I start to listen to others around me, and I have a lot of my conservative friends as I travel the country, travel the state, and a lot of them are thinking and talking like you are. And I, I got to tell you, it's, it's, it's making me scared because I'm going, we can't lose this one. Look, I agree with you. We can't afford to lose this. Uh, and it does not seem to me that given t- just simply totaling up the pluses and the minuses, how you overcome those minuses. We saw what single white women did to end the red wave a year and a half ago. You, those w- white, single white women aren't coming back. And all those married white women that he could depend upon in 2016, yeah. He's lost a significant share of those, too. So, again, uh, you know, I'm not trying to talk anybody into anybody else. I'm just very concerned because, as you said, this is an election that we cannot afford to lose. And right now, I mean, I get it when you have a, these, these meaningless polls right now that seem to suggest that tr- Trump is leading Biden. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm just sitting here right now feeling like, like I'm in an Orwellian novel. You mean to tell me this incompetent, senile old man could become president of the United States again? Yes, because the Democrats know that he's not really the guy making the decisions. They know that. They absolutely know. This is not a vote on the Democrat side for Biden. It is for the unelect. Think about how powerful that is for the left. If I were the left, I'd want Biden because you can do whatever you want from the progressive angle. And he, he, he it doesn't make he, he's not running again. He's a puppet. He's a puppet. Right. Yes, I yes. mean, if you put an actual Democrat in, he'll be responsible or she will for what is done. But with this case, this is the best case for them, right? Every, let Do- Biden take the heat. He doesn't care, right? Who cares? He, he doesn't even know what's going on. What about Robert Kennedy Jr.? No. <laughs> well, th- th- they're doing to Robert Kennedy what yes. we're doing to DeSantis, which yes. is odd. We do have a second story we should want to talk about here to show you how crazy this is. So reparations in California. And we know tragically that what happens in California, the minute it gets done, it doesn't go to Texas right away, but it goes to New York and Massachusetts and now Illinois and now Minnesota. That's right. And so reparations, Jake, uh, this is a story you picked out. Talk about the move, the push for reparations in California. Well, this is this is unreal. Gavin Newsom signed legislation in 2020 that they would create a panel that would actually do investigation into uh, uh paying for reparations to repair the damage done due to slavery in the United States of America. So people in America who didn't own slaves are supposed to give money to people who were never slaves. Yep. And that's what this panel concluded yep. to the tune of over $500 billion sure. starting in the state of California. But they're already various cities in, in Illinois and in Michigan, Detroit, and uh, I forget the city in Illinois now, but throughout the oh, North Carolina, Asheville, they're starting to say we need to have that applied yep. here too. So yep. you're absolutely right. The it's ripple because, effect. It's because money no longer means anything. Uh, to the progressive left, money is meaningless. And so, you know, I mean, it was a great article, I think it was in Breitbart yesterday, that this new allocation for the Ukraine that uh, Biden is considering would have built a border fence twice over. That's how much money we're giving to the Ukraine, for better or for worse. And meanwhile, so if that, if, when you think about that or the other expenditures on COVID that we spent, uh, the Green New Deal, 
Uh, what's five hundred billion dollars for black people in one state? Who cares? Well, it's interesting because we got a clip from Meet the Press where yes. this lady is demanding, I think, her house payments be paid for. Maybe we let's can play take, that. Let's yeah. Take it. So you've traced your ancestors back to slavery? Yes, on my father's father's side. An attorney with expertise in international reparations. Moore walked us through the task force's draft report, starting with a history lesson about California, a free state when it entered the Union in 1850. A lot of people don't know that there were over 2,500 enslaved black people in the state of California. Men and women brought west by Southerners during the gold rush and forced to work in the mines. Why do you think that black Californians should receive reparations? We're owed reparations for the debt owed from slavery due to the broken promise of reconstruction in this country and the lingering badges and incidents or systemic discrimination that African Americans still face today. How much generational wealth do you think has been lost? When you say how much, what do you mean? A dollar figure? Can you, can it's you? It's priceless. I'm a homeowner. I shouldn't have to pay property taxes. I should have free medical insurance. I should be able to go to the school that I want to go to without having to pay. <laughs> there you go. That's, what, that, that's why I'm saying it reinforces it, it, everything you just it's said. It's Obama phones all over again. Remember that? <laughs> I bought my Obama Got phones. Me. Exactly. <laughs> And so notice how quickly 2,500 slaves. Are you kidding me? 2,500. Not to demean. I'm sorry. Not, not to suggest any slavery is acceptable, but this is your argument. So every African-American in California, and by extension the country, today should get money because of this. I should be able to go to the college I want without having to pay for it. I shouldn't have to pay any property taxes. Just pull it off the deep swamp trees. Right. And it's interesting that she mentions that about slaves in California. When California came in in 1850 as a free state, it pissed off the Democratic Party because in their platform, slavery was one of the key points of it. Right. And so every time you see these things happening, there was freedom in, in Wisconsin, Ohio, New York. The Democratic Party was furious because they're going, states' rights, states' rights to have slaves. But when the states in the north says, we, what we, there's no slavery, they said, no, 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 we want the federal government to go into the states to make sure we can preserve or advance slavery. They don't understand history, and this is insane in 2023 to think that people who didn't own slaves must give money to people who were never slaves. This is 2023. This well, is unbelievable. Isn't that the de de basically the Democrat welfare plan all along? I yep. mean, isn't this isn't this what wealth redistribution redistribution is of yeah, this absolutely. is socialism this on is steroids? Just, this is this is just racialized version of it, yep. right? We need more of it because bad things happened to our ancestors. Now, if you point out to the left, bad things happened to everybody's ancestors, then you watch. Reparations, you're right. Reparations for everybody. Intellectuals in yep. society, Thomas Sowell and many great black thinkers, PhDs, you know, from Harvard and Stanford, they all say if you understand history, slavery has been with us from time immemorial. And we both know that this giveaway is not, is not about fixing or healing anything. It's about really destruction, socialism. It is the lurch yep. toward government responsible for everything. If we're going to give this kind of money to pretty much everybody who suffered, particularly minorities, well, then guess what? The free markets, capital, responsibility, uh, even justice, right? How you can argue it's just to take money away from me to give it to somebody who was never a slave you see what's happening here to property rights everything else this is a complete one more way in which the progressives are systematically undermining every foundation of american freedom and liberty yeah and by the way you talk about the deep state the administrative state imagine the bureaucracy in relationship to distributing the redistribution of goods to those who supposedly were related to some slave from 200 years ago yeah and the place to end here is with all this collapsing around us here we are fighting amongst ourselves slitting each other's throats <laughs> as republicans unbelievable <laughs> and that's going to wrap up the show if you have any questions comments or want to support the show simply visit drdusha.com for all of us here and for jake jacobs thanks we'll see you next week